Tired of overthinking your next step? Do you want simple steps to level up your mind, body, and spirit? Or maybe you need some inspiration to reach your goal. Then you've tuned into the right podcast. This is Keep Blooming, and I'm your host, Liz Montigny. Each week, I'll encourage you to drop the hustle mentality for hope and act on the dreams God has put on your heart. Like you, I'm doing all the things as a Catholic, a wife, a mom to three boys, and a licensed Ziegler coach. So let's get growing and keep blooming. You're listening to episode 60 of Keep Blooming. This is your host, Liz Montigny. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I'm offering you a Lenten meditation. This is my short play, Walking with Our Mother, from my theater ministry, The Marion Theater Project. This is a ministry I created at the encouragement of my own mother. We used to enjoy a performer named Marsha Perlmutter. She performed one woman plays based on historical figures like Madame Curie and Laura Ingalls Wilder. And at a big turning point in my life, my mom encouraged me to use my theater passion for the glory of God. She reminded me of Mrs. Perlmutter and said, you know, you could do that, but with Mary. So I thought about that And it took me a while to get started. I began with the passion of our Lord because I was very much inspired by a version of the Stations of the Cross that you may have prayed at your own parish. It's called Mary's Way of the Cross by Richard Fury. I adapted that meditation into a stage play. I like to call this script alive. I'm always making minor edits to it, usually when I go through intense spiritual growth or Our Lady or Jesus just kind of put something on my heart about it. So I honestly don't know how much of Mr. Fury's text is left at this point, but it was a big inspiration and a great starting point. This play came first in a collection I've created. The other two plays are based on the joyful and glorious mysteries. I've started and stopped working on the luminous luminous, uh, mysteries for a while, so they're not completed yet. I have more about the history of this project online at my website, marianplay.com. The server for that website has been misbehaving lately, so if you have trouble, you can also find it at a goodremedy.com, and that's all in the show notes. I also shared a bit more about this ministry in a previous broadcast. That's episode 59. I would love to hear your feedback on this. Do you want to hear the other two plays in this style? What do you think? So be sure to email me or fill out the poll that I've created on the platform. If you would like to experience these plays live as a collection, please invite me to your parish or special event. Go to my website, again, in the show notes, and fill out the performance request form, or you can email me at liz at lizmontignycoaching.com. In person, each play runs about uh, 20 minutes. Since I'm sharing this as kind of listening meditation and not a performance, The runtime will be a little shorter because obviously there's no need for my entering and exiting and, you know, moments of of silence and connection with the audience. So after you finish listening to this meditation, I encourage you to ponder the reflection questions I share at the end. They are also included in the show notes. Before I begin, let me set the scene for you. Imagine you are one of Jesus's apostles. It's late on Holy Saturday, and you're gathering with your friends in the upper room. You haven't seen the Blessed Mother, Mary, since you ran away. But Mary is coming to you now to offer you hope and share what happened to our Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Dear disciples, you are my children now. I know you are afraid. 
Do not listen to what others say to you. Listen to me, your mother. I am with you now because I want you to understand the Father's will and the gift he gives us in Jesus, our Lord. I knew it was his last Passover. Just days ago at supper, Jesus broke the bread, turning it into his own holy flesh. And when he poured the wine, it flowed as his own precious blood. While watching my son give every part of himself to us and for us, my soul overflowed with joy. Yet waves of sorrow were washing over me. I knew he was giving us the gift of his total self, body and soul. I will not forget this. John woke me late in the night to tell me they arrested Jesus. They took him away in chains under the cover of darkness. I asked the Father to let me share in our son's pain. I felt every tug on the ropes and chains the Pharisee soldiers had bound him with. John led me and the other women to the judgment hall. Oh, brothers, I did not see you. Where were you? It was early Friday morning when I got a glimpse of Jesus. He had been beaten, but his humiliation was not enough for the Pharisees. So Pilate ordered his scourging. I leaned on John for support, and he guided me to the courtyard for Jesus' torture. John told me to look away, but I watched the Roman soldiers taunt my son and strike him with whips, which had pieces of metal and bone attached to them, so not only the blow would hurt him, but when the soldiers snapped the whip back, they ripped his skin too. They tore Jesus' body to shreds, and his blood splattered on the stones. Jesus did not stop them. When the soldiers finished with him, their cruelty exhausting them, they dragged Jesus away. It was hard to think about what was coming next. We struggled against the crowds pushing into the square before Pilate's seat. Jesus was shoved out a door and blood was dripping down his face. He was wearing a crown of thorns. He limply held a reed in his hand and a dirty purple cloak had been thrown over his torn body. Oh, to see my son so humiliated broke my heart. I wanted to hold him and shield him, but I couldn't. Pilate asked the crowd if he should release my son, but all around us they shouted, Crucify him! I covered my ears. I wanted to plead with them to stop torturing an innocent man. Several soldiers dragged the massive wooden cross over to Jesus, then slamming it down on his shoulders, they shoved him down the road. I wanted to take the cross from him and carry it myself. We managed to follow close behind him as he stumbled toward Calvary. I could see the weight and splintered wood of the cross digging into my son's open wounds. And watching him fall face to the ground with the cross landing squarely on his back, I thought... He's already dead. The soldiers kicked him while he lay on the ground. Jesus rose slowly, taking up his cross, and started walking again. Yet they kept barking orders at him and whipping him. I wanted to offer Jesus a face of love amidst the noise and the violence. John gave me the strength to break through the crowd to see my son. I called to him through the deafening shouts and slurs. Jesus stopped. Our eyes met and he said, Mother, see, I make all things new. 
Then the soldiers pushed me aside and he stumbled on. We followed and prayed silently. We could see Jesus struggling to carry his heavy load. Each step looked if, if it would be his last. I felt the ache in his bones, the rawness of his wounds and his total exhaustion. I asked the father to offer our son any form of relief. I noticed some commotion near our Lord. The soldiers pulled a protesting man from the crowd. They ordered him to pick up the back of the cross. The man was confused and asked the soldiers why this had to be. By this time, John was able to get us closer to our Lord, and I noticed a woman slip past the soldiers. She did not fear them, nor Jesus' dirty, bloody face. She took off her veil and began to gently clean my son's face. She did what I could not. The soldiers pushed her back into the crowd, and her tender face seemed to ask me, Why are they doing this to him? I thanked the Father for his moments of mercy. Jesus fell again, and I started to reach for him, but the soldiers pushed me backward into John, and looking up, I could see he still had a hill to climb. On the hill, Jesus stopped in front of some women wailing and pitying him. He told the women to shed tears for themselves and their children, tears that would bring their conversion. These women did not understand he was suffering for all of them, all of you. Our Lord fell a third time on the rocky ground, so the soldiers dragged him the last few steps to the top of the hill. My heart was beating so hard it throbbed. I was relieved when the soldiers took the cross from my son. I thought he might have a chance to rest. Instead, they ripped the cloak off his blood-clotted skin. My son laid down on the cross and let himself be nailed. As they punctured his flesh, it felt like the nails were driving through my heart. His executioners pounded nails through his hands, and stacking one foot on top of the other, they drove one nail through both feet. Then they replaced his crown of thorns with such force, blood saturated his face and matted his hair. They crucified my son. There he was, hanging on the cross, being scorned as he struggled through his last hours of earthly life. Men were still mocking him, calling him a liar and a thief. The soldiers gambled for scraps of his cloak. Even after suffering at their hands, Jesus asked our Father to forgive them. During his agony, he comforted one of the thieves crucified by his side. And then he comforted his mother. He had the strength to commend me to John's care. When Jesus saw me weeping, he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou abandoned me? He spoke these words out of compassion for me, but also for himself, because in that moment, the spirit left us. I could not be separated from my son. When I looked up at him, my tears streamed like his blood. Standing beneath his cross, I reached up to touch and kiss his feet. He cried out in thirst and was offered bitter wine. After this, he uttered, it is accomplished. I had to watch my son die. His body was stained in blood, and while his skin turned gray, I heard him proclaim, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. As my son lowered his head and died. His earthly anguish was finished but mine was not. 
My body became numb in four seconds that felt like hours. I lost my senses. A veil of darkness fell over my eyes and I could not hear nor speak. Then I collapsed to the ground. It shook and the sky grew dark. So the soldiers fled in fear, saying truly this was the son of God. One soldier was ordered to stay. He pierced my son's heart with his lance, and Jesus' blood and water flowed out. It felt like the soldier pierced my heart, just as Simeon said. Our friends, Joseph and Nicodemus, made a secret request to Pilate for Jesus' body. They lowered him from the cross and placed his lifeless body in my arms. As I cradled him, I examined his wounds. Then they draped the linen over his body so they could carry him to his tomb. In the tomb, I washed his beaten body, which had already been contorted by death. Then I wrapped him like I used to do when he was a baby. I looked at my son, all alone, in the dark. Then I stepped away. Outside, a stone was rolled into place to seal the tomb. My children, please understand. Jesus paved a path to heaven for us. He humiliated himself, let himself be tortured and executed, so our sins are wiped away. His undying love and mercy for us is limitless. Our Savior's sacrifice of his holy body and earthly life opens the doors to a new life for all of us. I will rejoice forever, but not in silence. Please, let us pray together. In our Lord's own words. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who are in debt to us. And do not put us to the test, but save us from the evil one. Amen. My children, do not despair. He will return to us. You will see. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Keep Blooming. Tune in every Wednesday for a dose of hope and encouragement. To be the first to know about my upcoming retreats and latest offerings, become an email subscriber at LizMontignyCoaching.com. Have a wonderful week and remember to keep blooming.